Hello and welcome back to Cyber Hashira. Today I'll continue from where I left off in my last video about post quantum cryptography. In that video, I explained what PQC is and what NIST has been doing to develop it. In today's video, uh, we will discuss some of the cryptographic methods being reviewed by NIST. So before diving into algorithms, I thought it would be helpful to first understand different variants of post-quantum cryptography. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get into various PQC algorithms, I wanted to first explain the three main types of PQC algorithms currently being reviewed by NIST. These are code-based, lettuce-based, and hash-based algorithms. There are additional types of PQC algorithms that I have chosen not to include in this slide, and uh, I will explain why and discuss them later in this video. So let's start with code-based cryptography. Code-based cryptography is based on error-correcting codes, which is a technique used for detecting and correcting errors in a data. Let me explain what error-correcting codes are. When data is transmitted digitally over a noisy channel, the receiver will always use error-correcting techniques to decode the data and correct any errors in it. Code-based cryptography applies the same principle to secure the data. Let me explain how it works. Code-based cryptography uses error correction with some added complexity. To encrypt data, extra random information is intentionally added. The intended receiver can decipher the encrypted message using a specific knowledge or an error correcting code. For example, the text that you see right now on your screen contains a secret message, and I'm sure it's impossible for anyone to know what that secret message is without a secret code or the error correcting code to decipher it. I have intentionally added noise or random bits to my message. The secret message in this text can be found by reading the 7th, 18th and 35th word. You are amazing. Everything else is the noise added to the message and 7, 18, 35 is the error correcting code or the secret key. Okay, obviously it's not as simple as the example that I showed you. Code-based cryptography uses a similar but a lot more complex method to secure data. The unique approach used by code-based cryptography is believed to be quantum resistant. There are different types of error correcting technique and GOPA technique is one of them. Mechalese is a great example of an algorithm that uses code-based cryptography. It was developed by Robert Mechalese in 1978. So this algorithm is almost as old as RSA, yet it hasn't been broken. Just imagine an RSA algorithm with a small key size was broken few years ago. The Mechalese algorithm can encrypt and digitally sign data. It can also perform cryptographic operations faster than RSA. Now, you must be wondering if Mechalese algorithm is as old as RSA and remains unbroken and is also faster, then why isn't it as widely used as RSA? Well, the answer lies in the key size used by Mechalese. The keys are significantly large, often several hundreds or even thousands of kilobytes in size. Just imagine, the most popular key size of RSA is 2048 or 256 bytes. In contrast, the key size of Mechalese is measured in several kilobytes. And that's why Mechalese hasn't been as popular as other asymmetric algorithms such as RSA, DSA or ECDSA. And the three examples of code-based algorithms are classic Mechalese, Bike, and HQC. The next type I'm going to discuss is a hash-based cryptography. Hash-based cryptography becomes easier to understand once you grasp the concept of hashing. 
Hashing algorithms like SHA-256 or SHA-3 helps verify data integrity by generating a fixed length hash using a one-way function. The security of these hash functions depends on how difficult it is to reverse the hash and retrieve the original data. Because hash functions generate a fixed length hash using one-way function, they are well suited for signature schemes. Unlike traditional methods that rely on hard to solve mathematical problems, hash-based signature schemes uses hash functions as their building block. The Merkle signature scheme is a good example of that. The Merkle signature scheme is one of the foundational element of hash-based cryptography. It uses Merkle tree combined with one-time signature scheme to generate digital signatures. Let me explain what a Merkle tree is. Okay, here's what a Merkle tree looks like. It's an upside down tree with a root at the top and multiple leaf node at the bottom. It is also referred to as hash tree because the entire structure is formed using the hash value of the nodes. Let me explain how this structure is formed. So just imagine there are eight blocks of messages from letter A to letter H and each of these block is hashed using a hash function. The hash values produced by each message block becomes a leaf node. The letter H represents the hash function and the letter inside the bracket represents the message block it has hashed. And then each of the leaf node is paired and hashed again to form another node in the tree. The two hashed values serve as child nodes and the new node created by hashing these two values is called a parent node. And the process of hashing pairs of leaf nodes continues until only one node remains, which is known as the root node. And to prove the integrity of a message in a Merkle tree, all that is required is the hash value of the other pair node. For example, if I want to prove the integrity of message C, I only need to provide the hash value of the leaf node denoted by HD, the hash of C1, and the hash value of P2. Recomputing all the hash should result in a matching root value, provided the message has not been tampered with. And this is the same principle used in the Merkle signature scheme. Coming back to the main slide, the Winternet's one-time signature is a digital signature scheme that uses a secure hash function to sign messages. Each key is used only once and is never reused, as doing so could compromise the security of the scheme. A hash-based algorithm can be put into two categories, stateful and stateless. Here are some of the differences between stateful and stateless hash-based cryptography. Stateful hash-based cryptography requires maintaining the state of a Merkle tree to track key usage, whereas stateless hash-based cryptography eliminates the need for such state management. To prevent key reuse, a stateful hash method requires state management by keeping track of one-time signature keys that have been used. A stateless hash method does not require maintaining a state because it dynamically uh, derives keys and ensures security without tracking key usage. Stateful hash methods produce smaller signatures compared to stateless hash-based methods. Stateful hash methods are computationally more efficient compared to stateless hash methods. Stateful methods can generate digital signatures and verify them faster than stateless hash methods. LMS, XMSS, and Spings Plus are three examples of hash-based algorithms. LMS and XMSS are stateful, whereas Spings Plus is stateless. The next type we are going to discuss is lattice-based cryptography. As the name suggests, this type of cryptography relies on the mathematical structure of lattices. Let me try to explain a lattice. Okay, I was a below average student in maths, so 
I had to read up on lattices to understand what they are. So I'll try to explain a lattice using the two images that you see on your screen. Imagine a lattice as a grid made up of points arranged in a regular pattern. These grids can exist in multiple dimensions. The lines that you see in this grid are vectors that connects one point to another. The grid you see on the left is a two-dimensional lattice, which is the simplest form of a lattice. And the grid that you see on the right-hand side is a three-dimensional lattice. Compared to a two-dimensional lattice, a three-dimensional lattice is slightly more complex. The complexity of a lattice increases as more dimensions are added. The security of lattice-based cryptography relies on the difficulty of solving lattice-based problems. These problems become increasingly difficult to solve as more dimensions are added to a lattice. The foundation of lattice-based cryptography lies in three mathematically challenging problems. The shortest vector problem, the closest vector problem, and learning with errors. Once again, I'm not the best person to explain these topics due to my limited uh, expertise in mathematics. So I'll leave them for you to explore on your own if you're interested. A notable advantage of lattice-based algorithm is their computational efficiency. They enable faster key generation, encryption, and digital signing while requiring minimal computational resource. Another notable advantage of lattice-based algorithm is their relatively small key size. Compared to other PQC algorithms, lattice-based algorithms generally have the smallest key size. However, these keys are still significantly larger than those used in traditional algorithms such as RSA and ECDSA. But with our current computing power, I don't believe this is going to pose any problem for us. MLDSA and MLChem are excellent examples of lattice-based algorithms. These two were standardized by NIST in August last year. Okay, uh, the algorithms currently being reviewed by NIST are either code-based, lattice-based, or hash-based. However, there are some additional types of PQC algorithms that I have chosen not to discuss in detail. These include isogeny-based, multivariate-based, and MPC in the head-based algorithms. I have excluded them because some algorithms from these categories were disqualified during the evaluation process, while others are part of additional digital signature schemes. Um, it's another PQC evaluation by NIST. Okay, I'll start with isogeny-based cryptography. Super singular isogeny key encapsulation, or PSYCH, is an example of an isogeny-based algorithm. It was developed for key encapsulation use case. And super singular isogeny Diffie-Hellman is another isogeny-based algorithm uh, developed for uh, use in key agreement protocol. Both of these algorithms were withdrawn after security vulnerabilities were discovered, um, rendering them insecure and disqualifying them from further consideration. The mathematics used in isogeny algorithm is also highly complex, making the task of uh, reviewing these algorithms challenging. And at the time of recording this video, there is only one algorithm called SQI sign under second round review by NIST as part of additional digital signature schemes. Another variant of PQC algorithm is multivariate cryptography, with Rainbow being an example of this type. It was developed for use in digital signatures. Unfortunately, Rainbow was withdrawn from the PQC candidate selection during the third round. A drawback of using multivariate-based algorithms is their extremely large key size. The security of multivariate-based algorithm is based on multivariate quadratic equation. And these are some of the multivariate-based algorithms currently being reviewed by NIST under the Additional Digital Signature Scheme. 
The next type is MPC in the head. Here, MPC stands for multi-party computation. It is a technique that allows multiple parties to jointly solve a problem while keeping their inputs secret. MPC in the head builds on this technique to provide zero knowledge proof. Now, you might be wondering, what is zero knowledge proof? A zero knowledge proof is a cryptographic method in which one party proves to another that they possess a certain secret without actually revealing that secret. Compared to other algorithms, the MPC in the head technique is much simpler to understand and implement. It is also a stateless cryptographic technique that relies on a compact proof for efficiency. MPC in the head uses secure hash functions and well-known cryptographic primitives. And these are some examples of MPC in the head based algorithms. Next, I want to talk about the NIST Additional Signature Scheme before wrapping up. The main goals of NIST Additional Signature Scheme are as follows. So the goal is simple. Instead of depending on only a small number of uh, cryptographic algorithms for digital signatures, NIST is trying to explore a broader set of alternative algorithms. One of the main goals is to provide more options instead of relying on just one or two proven methods. For example, most of the algorithms standardized by NIST are either lattice-based or hash-based. Now, if everyone is using only one of these two types of algorithms, and if they were broken in the future, uh, it could create significant risk. To avoid this, NIST is working to include a variety of cryptographic algorithms to reduce such risk. NIST is trying to accomplish this goal by focusing on other computationally challenging problems. And some of the types of algorithms being reviewed by NIST under additional digital signature scheme includes isogeny based, multivariate based and MPC in the head based algorithms. And that is all I have for you in this video. Um, in this video, I explained some of the different types of PQC algorithms to give you an overview. My next video will cover various PQC algorithms. So stay tuned for that. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.